Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hebrew chapter 3. Hebrew 3. 7 to 14. Hallelujah. Hebrew chapter 3. Verse 7 to 14. We continue our discussion on a cure. What? For a heart of what? Unbelief. Look at what it says here. From verse 7. Hebrew chapter 3 from verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion or as in provocation. Like the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my work for 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation. Did you say that? And said, they always go astray in their hearts. And they have not known my ways. Verse 11. So I saw what? In my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Verse 12. Let's keep reading. We are going to verse 14. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily why it is called today. Lest, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Say amen to that. Amen. We started the discussion about four, I think four weeks ago. And we said that unbelief, the uh, Bible calls it an evil heart of unbelief. And we said that Paul was trying to encourage the Hebrew Christians who had come to embrace Christ from going back to, from going back to Judaism and forsaking Christ. Because there were people troubling them and telling them, look, this Christ we have received is not enough. You must add something else to it. Please, somebody let me warn them upstairs. You know, saying that, okay, what they have received is not enough. They needed to add something to, to that faith. And they were going back to Judaism. And Paul was telling them that if you do this kind of thing, God has a rest for you in Christ, and you would miss out on that. And uh, he said, this trait, your father exhibited it, right? And they missed out on, on entering God's rest in the Old Testament. So he began to warn them not to go about the same thing. Praise God. Amen. Don't mind me, because I'm slow, right? Don't worry. It's not every time somebody of my age should be active. Just allow me to just go like that. If you want to sleep, you can sleep. This one, I will not even quarrel you if you sleep. Even because even me, I, I feel like sleeping. <laughs> Praise God. You know, uh, you know we, are, we, are, we, we, we travel to Kogi. Those places are far. I sat to the point that my mom started hurting in the car. We went to a village very close to Ondo State. Very far, 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 far. Inside, we passed Ogidi, we went to Aye something, all those places, you know. They are always Aye, Aye, do, Aye, hit Aye something, you know. So we went for something, then we started coming back again. So, so permit me if I'm going like this. So if you want to sleep, I will meet, I understand with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, anyway, we said this, now I don't want to do a lot of review because it will take our time. We talk about the causes of or the traits of this kind of unbelief, right? We said sometimes uh, this kind of evil heart of unbelief so it's deli could be deliberate. Whereby a man, no matter what you say, they will not believe. Number two, it's inexcusable. Number three, we say sometimes it could be demonic. <laughs> whereby the devil picks the word from somebody's heart before they could believe. Hallelujah. And then we said uh, number four. 
Yeah, when somebody is slow of heart to believe, whereby you explain, 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 they will still not, <laughs> they will still not get it. Glory be to God forevermore. Yeah. Today, I just, I just want to touch on something I called, what are the consequences for unbelief? Consequences for evil heart of unbelief. We are dead with the causes. What are the consequences? I will, I will rush through them. Glory be to God forevermore. Number one, consequence of unbelief. Because some of you just think that, is it not unbelief? I just choose not to believe now. May you not be stranded in life. Amen. And because just says, is it, is, is it not my life? I just, I just choose not to believe. It has consequences. If God says, this is the way I want something to be done, and you say, I don't want to do it that way, there will be consequences. That is the reason why a lot of Christians are in church. They believe Christ, which is the beginning of faith. But they don't exercise any faith beyond that level. Ah, that's why we come to church now. Pastor will be talking. They think that they, they are talking word of God. You know, use your senses, use your brain. And you think that is faith. So if you are to use your senses, why do you have the spirit of God? Why do you have the word of God? We're supposed to be an unpass. Bible says, how shall a young man cleanse his ways? How will a young man perfect his ways? Is it not by giving heed to the word of God? Bible says the word of God has become what a light to our path. So if your eyes were light, why didn't Bible God say use your eyes? He said use the word, for the word is light. Glory be to God forevermore. So if we are going to use our head, what difference between you and somebody who doesn't know God at all? Glory be to God forevermore. You are like a man who has a car. You know, I don't, I'm, I, I don't know how to describe it. Maybe DJ knows more about car. You know, he likes those things. You know, let's say you have a car that is, I don't know, you know, you have four, four cylinders. And then you have this one with 16 cylinders. Power! And you can, you can get to anywhere you are going to go to Kano. You say, no. What is nonsense? You know, our forefathers, they used to walk from here to Saudi Arabia. And, and, you, dis- and you decide to walk to Kano. You will suffer. You will su- you will you, hey, hey, your suffer. <laughs> you know, like Nigerian English, your sufferness. <laughs> That's Nigerian English. Your sufferness will be will be unusual. Are you hearing me? Say no, nonsense. You are like a man. That's the picture of a man who has faith, who abandons faith, decides to do it his own way. You have what could prepare you that could hasten your journey, but you have abandoned it to go about your own way. You will get a result. You will get natural result, predictable result, wow. and a result that Satan can stop anytime. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Because he decided to go, go about it what? Natural way, predictable way. So you get natural result, predictable result, and a result that Satan can stop. But the Bible says, taking up what is the shield of faith. We are where shall be to quench what all the fury does of the wicked one. There is something that Satan doesn't have an answer to. It's called faith. Say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. So number one consequence of walking in unbelief is that number one, it provokes God. Unbelief provokes God. There are many Christians who are living, who are not pleasing God. You know what the Bible says? Hebrews 11 verse 6. The Bible says without faith what? It is impossible to please God. That means if a man is walking in an unbelief, in an unbelief, he's displeasing to God. Provoking God. Hallelujah. Amen. Go to that place we read in Hebrews chapter 3. Let's see verse 9 and 10. You will see what it said there. Verse 9 and 10. Quickly. It says, Wherefore, your father tested me and tried me and saw my works. What? 40 years. And the work of God they saw was negative work because he made sure they all died. For 40 years, they all died out. Look at, it, look at the next line. Because of that, we said, therefore I was what? Angry with that generation. He said, they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. I was what? Angry. That's why I said, unbelief does what? It provokes God. It makes God angry. Hallelujah. Go to the book of Genesis chapter 16. 
Genesis 16. One of the greatest desires of God is to be believed. The greatest honor you can give to God is not singing to him. The greatest honor you can give to God is not giving to him. The greatest honor you can give to God is to believe him. Whereby, when he says something, you are not questioning it. Because when you question what God says, you have not doubted who he is, you have doubted his integrity, you have doubted his essence. That's why Bible says, Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. So when you begin to doubt him, you have brought him to the realm of man. Glory be to God forevermore. The greater desire of God is to be believed. That's why when they came to Jesus Christ, they said, look, he said, they came to him and said, what, what shall we do to do the work of God? He said, you want to do the work of God? He said, the work of God is to believe him who has sent. That is the beginning of doing the work of God. If, one, if you don't believe who has sent, you can't do the work of God. Hallelujah. Raise up your right hand and say, I believe. I believe. Hallelujah. Amen. You cannot sit in church, come to church day in, day out, and your heart is not with God, and you don't believe God, and you are full of calculation and planning. Nonsense. You have people on your list that you plan to defraud. Because you don't believe that God will meet your need. Evil heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Let, me, let, let me quickly go to, to, to... Let me leave that alone this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to be slow, but something in me is fast. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. What, I said Genesis what? 16. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, go, go, go to Genesis 16. Let me read something for you quickly. You will, I just want to extrapolate something there. No, no, not 16, it's 15. Sorry, it's not Sarah. It's Abraham. 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came, look, listen, listen, listen to this, came to Abraham in the vision, saying, do not be afraid. Abraham, I am, I am, a, I am your shield, and your exceeding great reward. Go on. But Abraham said, Lord, what will you give me, saying I go childless? And here my house is, is Eliezer of Damascus. And uh, then Abraham said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my hair. Okay? And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your hair, but one who, who will come from your own body shall be your hair. Look at the next line. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now towards heaven. And count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your what descendants be. May God bless you to the extent Amen. that you are not able to count. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And look at the next line. Powerful. And what? And he believed in the Lord. And he did what? And he believed. It, look, listen. I want to, sorry, let me hear. Listen, it doesn't take a lot to believe, like I've told you. It's not even a process that uh, I would think. It's either you're either in, in faith or don't believe. You are not in transit. <laughs> you are that in unbelief or in faith. <laughs> not that I'm on my journey. Mm. Hallelujah. Here he was, complete. God came to him and said, I'm your existing great reward. So, 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 so. He said, Look, God, I'm, I go childless. The only one who looks like my ear is a servant in my house. He was complaining right now. God said, okay, you are complaining. You are come, follow me. Look at the stars of heaven. Can't. Although, the day I was explaining that place to you, it was not canting. No. Uh, that's what you guys read in the Bible. That it was canting. It wasn't canting. Uh, I bet it's, you are not a Bible school student. Uh, don't worry. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> God will show him certain stars, certain signs in heaven. The word canting there is the word read the stars. It's not that, that's where you got star readers. Read the stars. That is where you tell the, that's where what told the story of salvation. Let me leave you. It's not today. He said, so shall the same that what be. So that is why, you know, Jesus said, he said, Abraham saw my day. He, has, he saw the salvation of his river. He saw billions of children. That's why we call us Abraham's seed. 
So he didn't see the Jews only, he saw us. In the stars. But leave that alone. How can you ask a man who just now complained about being childless to take a look and saw something? And the Bible says, immediately, and he believed. Not that I said, I'm going to think about it. Not that let me go back and consult with Sarah and see. Immediately, complaining, the word of God came and he what? He believed. On the spot. May you be quick to believe. Amen. Quick to believe. And he believed. But look at the next line. Look at the next line. Look at the, look, look, let's read it. And what he, God, counted it to you for what? For righteousness. Hallelujah. He counted it to you for what? For righteousness. Because in that star, he saw Christ. And he believed Christ. Abraham saw my day. And you know, Christ our righteousness. God said, you see him, you believe him, I count it for. For righteousness. For righteousness. Yeah. Do you know what I want to tell you there? And he did not believe. Yes, assume, right? And he refused to believe in the Lord. And the Lord counted it to him for what? For unrighteousness. Wow. You know the point I'm trying to make there? Do yeah. you know why unbelief provokes God? Because unbelief is what unrighteous is the flip side of belief. If belief, if faith is counted for righteousness, unbelief is counted for what unrighteousness. So it's not just no man. I, 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 I can't believe anything. I, I can choose not to believe. You are living in unrighteousness. Hallelujah. How would you feel? You sit your son down. And you explain certain things to him. This is what I've done. So I've done. I said, Daddy, I don't believe you. I said, go and sit down. And you think it's okay. It's not okay at all. You want to talk of God explaining certain things to you. And you say, I don't believe. I, you get what I'm saying right now. It's not as simple as you make it look. Glory be to God forevermore. It provokes God. That's why when, when, when you read that place in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 16, what the Bible says, you know, you know, Mark is a very, very abridged version of the gospel. Everything, Bible says immediately. Everything is about immediately, instantly. You know, because, you know, Mark was, the book of Mark was written to Romans. Because Romans don't understand long talk. They are soldiers. So it's about immediately. Short, short, short. short. Don't have time for, you know, when I was going to the market, I saw the maternity, I greeted there, and I stopped. Police and I said, come out. No, no, they don't have time for that. Pa, 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 pa. So everything that Mark was saying, pa, 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 finish all. Resurrection, he, he summarized the whole resurrection, the story, Mary Magdalene, go to the family, John, every, all of them, he appeared to this one. He, he summarized all those three chapters. Summarized in about 10 verses. Go, 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 go to chapter 16, verse 12. Ha, 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 yeah, yeah. Anyway, when I just, my time stop, I'll just stop. Hallelujah. I, because I didn't say I tell you, I will tell you the consequence. I want, I want to tell you the consequences. <laughs> eh? Hallelujah. I, mean, I will not tell you the number so that when I leave, you will know whether I finish or not. <laughs> but the Bible says, after that, he appeared to he appeared another form to two of them that who walked to the way. To the, remember this story? When he appeared on the way to Amos, remember? Uh, it was almost a whole chapter of book of Luke. Luke book of Luke. He just, in one verse, he mentioned it. That's all. There's no need for long. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he appeared, what? In another form, to two of them, as they walked and went into the country. That's all. Uh, they share communion, he built communion, their eyes were open. It's too long. <laughs> he appeared to them in another form. That's all. <laughs> Just two lines. The Bible said they rose up the same night and went and told the rest, right? Eh? And they went and told it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. You remember? He just summarized everything. Shut up. Then verse 14. Later, he appeared to the, uh, to the eleven, and they sat what? At the table. And he what? And he rebuked them. If you read the word rebuke, it's an understatement. The Bible says, I rebuke them for all, for their unbelief. You know, some of you, may God not confront you Amen. and rebuke you for your unbelief. Amen. You are planning to do something. Every step of the way, you will stop. God, are you working? God, are you not doing it? Why don't you go there? When the fire gets hottest, it will show up. 
When you get to the arena, you meet him there. Glory be to God forevermore. Yeah. Oh, if you want to walk with, walk with God with your head, you will miss out too. Yeah. You will miss out. Hey, God, send me to, for me to do. Where will the helpers come? Where will this one do? Who will do this one for me? Why don't you go out? Why don't you make that move and see where the money will come from? And see where the help will come from? And see where the cancer will come from? And see where the open doors will come from? Glory be to God forevermore. Yeah. If you are waiting for all things to line up, you are taking what I call calculated step. Like pastors said, like pastors who don't know what God will tell you, take calculated risk. <laughs> you have calculated risk, huh? and you fail in a calculated manner. We didn't say do this without wisdom. When I started doing Bible school, one of the first lectures I would teach in that Bible school is what I call purpose versus prayer. A lot of people are not in purpose, they are praying. Hear me, brothers and sisters. The most important thing in life is to be in purpose. Yes, sir. Fasting cannot convert what you are doing to purpose. It's like a man who wakes up in the morning, who comes to cut your grass, and is knocking your door, give me money. You, you employ him? <laughs> and he's shouting, oh God, oh master of this house, pay me, pay me, I command money, hey, neighbor come out here, and I add the fasting to it. Hey! You didn't employ him for that purpose. Everybody pays for what they order for. If you decide to go and be doing something that God has not purpose for you, Fasting and prayer will not convert it to purpose. I'm trying my best. Man. <laughs> so you see a lot of people frustrated. They say God, has, God is not faithful. Are you, in, are you in purpose? That is why Christianity you cannot survive. Survive Christianity by copying. I said, I, what is doing? Doing very well. Now you now do like this. Mm. <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Wow. Glory be to God forevermore. So I thank God for your life that you are doing well in what God has called you to do. You know what I need to do? God order me to my own steps. You know, this recently we are praying for our children. We started praying last Wednesday for our children. I don't mean for much. I don't mean we are praying for my, <laughs> we are praying for all our children. That they will find purpose early. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can be a prime minister by 30. Yeah. Joseph was. Yeah. You can finish what God called to you by 33. Jesus did. Yes. You can reign by 30. Yeah. David was. Yeah. Are you hearing me? You can kill Goliath by 17. Yes, Joseph did. Yeah. Uh, yes, sorry, David did. Yeah. If you are in purpose, things will work out for you. Hallelujah. This is what's called holy diversion, right? <laughs> like when we prayed earlier on, God, let's answer the questions about this heart. Answer the questions about this heart. May God take struggle away from your life. May, honestly, may God take struggle away from your life. I thank God, let somebody cancel you, get this and cancel it, all those things. God can speak through them. I'm not despising. But when they have canceled you, go and pray. Go and pray. And sometimes when you are not in tune with God, but you are a prayerful person and you are praying and God is helping you, somehow God will send another voice to your life that will guide you at critical junctions in life. But when you are not prayerful, you don't hear God, you are stubborn, it will leave you to your, to your own devices. Hey, see you all this morning, Abby. And I came to tell you consequences. <laughs> Someone doesn't want to hear consequences. Some of you don't like that word, consequences. Hallelujah. Amen. Bible says he upbraided them for what? For unbelief. That's, it didn't say the word, it's King James, I use the word rebuke. No. 
in origin, I say he upbraided them. Look, that's what he said in the King James Version. Oh, yes. What did he say? Look, what, what is, hey. And what upbraided them for unbelief? The Greek word for that upbraid is not, uh, no, no, don't do that again. It's the way you talk to somebody with your teeth. You know, this. That's the meaning. Go and check it when you get to. Are you guys okay? <laughs> that is Jesus. <laughs> Jesus talking like, I said, I don't understand that. Are you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because unbelief provokes him. Glory be to God forever, man. And let me round up on this. So I came here to do number one point only. Hallelujah. But tell your neighbor, neighbor, believe, believe God, believe God. Just believe. Are you hearing me? I just believe God. Are you hearing me? Stop talking trash with other people. Uh, Nigeria is dangerous, so, uh, you know, Nigeria is dangerous. They will kidnap you in your house. Stop talking trash with them. Are we not here? Is God not helping us? Are we not eating? Is God not taking care of us? Are you hearing me? Is God not opening doors? Where will you live on earth that you won't need faith? Even in the villa, they need faith. Because there are more enemies than friends inside the villa. <laughs> Even inside the villa, you need faith. Glory be to God forevermore. Wow. Because somebody who doesn't have money will be believing God. Once I have money, all my problem will be solved. You will just realize that when you have money, certain problem, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Taking the shield of faith. We shall be able to quench what all the fairy dust or the wicked one. There's no way you will be that we will require faith. This word is a falling word. Since Adam fell, everything fell. Creation fell. So you to survive in this falling world, you need faith. Glory be to God forever. Man. So let me round up on this. Hallelujah. Go to the book of Mark chapter 6. Why is it that unbelief provokes God? Because a lot of people think that he provokes God because of his ego. Yeah, you know, a lot of us, we, we, we think God as a man. You know, the way you can get angry. Where, whereby, you know, you promise somebody, you know, like one day I was, I nearly beat up somebody. That time we were at um, uh, the heaven. That is... Uh, God forgive me, I removed that word. I wanted to say that this stupid boy, but you know. But it's a stupid boy, but you know. <laughs> but I don't need to say it. I'm a pastor. Are you hearing me? You know. We finished. You no, know, we had downstairs and we had upstairs. I used to go that uh, where the children used and everything. So after service, I went up and I came down. So I met him. He was crying. He was the boy was in the choir in those days. So he was crying. You know, what did happen? This guy. They, they stole my phone. They stole my phone. You know, as pastor. So the one thing about church is a stealing church. Not that I had a lot of money. I was just trying to be nice. I said, I wanted to mention it. But no, I said, don't worry. I buy you a phone this week. Tomorrow, I get you another phone. And that was it. I left. So I attended to other things. When I was going out of the church, maybe 15 minutes, 30 minutes later, I met him at the car park, crying. I said, I said they stole your head. Oh, I mean, maybe, maybe they stole, it's not about the phone again. I said, well, what did they steal? It? What is it? He says, it's my phone. I said, you are him. <laughs> I, I nearly beat him up. I was mad. I just promised you that I will buy you another phone. No care. Okay. <laughs> okay. I said, I'll buy you another phone. And here you are making another show outside. Yeah. Crying. Seeking sympathy. You must be crazy. I nearly beat him up because my ego was hot. Because I promised him. He didn't believe me. But for God, it's not because his ego is hot. Love doesn't have ego. Yeah. 
You know what? What provokes God is because your unbelief robs him of opportunity of blessing. And you want you so much want to bless somebody, but you cannot violate your word. And they tie your hand with their unbelief. It hurts you. Mark chapter 6. Let's stand up this morning. Hope you got something this morning. Hallelujah. And he went from there and came to his own country. And disciples followed him. Wanted to bless them. You know the way you don't you hear, say your brother don't blow for US. He don't blow for Canada. He don't blow for Lagos. He don't become big boy. He now came home to come and demo for the family. Say, cool, I want to spoil you. Like a governor used to do in those days. He would drive, drive and park his car. Make I spoil them. A governor. <laughs> they will now bring out money and be sharing. He won't spoil them. Crazy people. We have been ruled by animals for long. Let's go. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this has given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Look, and look, 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 go on, go on, verse 3. Is this not carpent- the carpenter? The son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, and Judah, and Simon, are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, in his own house. That's some crazy nieces. Crazy nephews. Don't let me talk family business. Let's go. <laughs> Silly set of people, let's go. Now he could not do what? No mighty work there. That is what pays God. Except that he laid his hand on what? On few sick people and healed them. Verse 6. And he marveled because what? Of their own belief. This thing was easy for me everywhere. I blessed them. I did everything. I came to my own people. They couldn't believe. And he hurt him. He marveled at their own belief. It wasn't his ego. It was his desire to bless them. That their own belief short circuited him. I pray for every one of you today. May your unbelief not show sacrifice your blessings. I want everybody under the sound of my voice to approach the future with confidence. You know why I said so? You, you, you know what he said? You know what he said? You know what he said? He said, I know the thought I think towards you thought of peace and not of evil to give you what? A future and a hope. I may not have cover right now, but my future is secured. So I will not join somebody to complain about the future. That's right, that's right. You think the value of Naira is strange to God? No, 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 no. Not at all. You think it caught him by surprise? No. Your future is past tense to God. What you call future, what you call news, is gossip to God. Don't happen. <laughs> it don't already happen. Hallelujah. Amen. So be, be, be at rest. Be at rest. You will not die like a chicken. Amen. The wicked one will not take advantage of you. Amen. The Lord will keep your going out Amen. and keep your coming in. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Look at, what, look at what God said to the children of Israel, to, the, to what Jesus said to, to the Jews. It was so hot. He said, how many times have I decided to take you like a chicken? That's right. Takes his hand and yes. keep them under yes. his wing yes. Yes. to take care of them. Yes. He said, but you will not allow me. Yes. He said, you will not allow me. So the hurt was not that they didn't believe him. You didn't allow me to take care of you. The way the chicken takes care of what, the hand takes out the chicks. That was the hurt. I want to bring you under and cover you. He said, but now your house is left unto you desolate. He said, very soon your enemy will come around you and compass you and lay you to the ground. It happened in 70 AD. The Romans came, leveled them. They were trying to resist. God was laughing at them. Just look. Jesus, look at the temple. He said, this is your temple that you are looking at. He said, it is coming that not one stone will be left on top of each other. 
You know when that, that place was about to be invaded, the Roman commander gave them, even the emperor gave them, gave the commander there order that whatever you destroy, don't destroy the temple. Whatever you destroy, don't touch the temple. But Jesus, the king of kings, gave a command. He has given, given a prophecy that this one, not one of them will remain. You know what? Some, some so just ran inside, tried to arrest some Jews. The, a fire started. Before you know it, the temple was retreated to rubble. Not a, one of them was left. The king said, preserve the temple. The king of peace said, it will not stand. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who prevailed? Glory be to God forever. Man. So this morning, as we go forth, we receive the grace of God Amen. afresh. Amen. We receive the supply Amen. of favor afresh. Amen. We receive the help of God afresh. Amen. We believe you yes. that it shall be unto us yes. according to your word. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray one prayer for you before we go upstairs this morning. I come against violence. Hear me. I know what I'm talking about exactly. So some of you already have too many children. So I'm not talking about that. I know exactly what I'm saying. I come against violence. I come against barrenness. This one that life is going nowhere, no result, nothing to show. I come against barrenness. I come against barrenness. Whereby a man labors, labors, nothing to show, everything is dry, no testimony. I come against barrenness in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against barrenness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are attacking from the root. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We bind you. Yes. You spirit of barrenness. We say you will no longer become operational in our midst. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever we send our hand to do is fruitful. Amen. Our words are fruitful. Our works are fruitful. Yeah. Our actions are fruitful. Yeah. In the name of Jesus yeah. Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus yeah. Christ. We are fruitful. Yeah. In the name of Jesus yeah. Christ. You will not get to 50, 60 and look back and say, what have I done with my life? Yeah. It's spirit of barrenness. We rebuke it. We take authority over it. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, ability to have children is not a proof that you are fruitful. It's not a proof. Do you get what we are saying this morning right now? Father, I give you praise. We honor your holy name. I thank you for fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of you know that if a mango is barren and the owner goes to buy mango, uh, mango fruits and tie it to it and says, see, my mango fruit is very nice. Who is this view? When the sun arises, they will dry. Yeah. Is that not the tragedy of Christians who are trying to buy fruit? And try to appear fruit when you are not fruit. You appear to appear fruitful when you are not fruit. When it comes to barrenness, hear me. It's not a show thing. It's an intercessory thing. Yes, sir. Yes. You will cry out to God like Jabesh. Oh God, that you will bless me indeed. indeed. Yes. That's how it works. So. It's not sure. It's not all this calculation that people tell you. Hallelujah. 
Father, I give you praise. We honor your holy name. Lord. Thank you for a blessed week and a fruitful week in Jesus' mighty name. Are you happy you came to church this morning? Let's celebrate God, everybody. Hallelujah!